Hello, hello. Hello, hello, and welcome to episode number 50. On a Thursday. On a Thursday. And he's out of focus. Who's out of focus? Are, the, are we out of focus? Are we out of focus? Are we? Oh, that's how we're feeling today, isn't it? We're not quite on it. And then just to go on. Doing a few adjustments. Mm-hmm. Yeah, fine tuning. So meanwhile, well, we're probably welcome. Gonna, it's, it's probably a bit of a surprise to many people that are watching now. Very much so. We had a bit early because of tomorrow. We'll yes. be working from home. That's right. That's nice and focused. So actually, brighten up a bit, maybe. A bit dark. Thank you. Oh, there, there you go. Let's see it. We're brighter. Oh, that's like the sunshine's come out. It's almost like a compliment to myself. <laughs> hey. All right. So All right. for for those who don't know, uh, we're going into lockdown tomorrow. Yes. So it starts at midnight, and so hence we won't be able to do our live that we normally do on Friday. Yeah. And hence why we're sort of trying to distance ourselves a little bit because. We're meant to be Correct. far apart. So, um, last time we went into lockdown was very long. And it was. we ended up doing the hands from home. So, we are hopeful that we don't have to do this no. again. But, uh, so we're trying to do this early. Yes. And, uh, yeah, just bring you the usual live at the early. So, this yep. is episode 50, which is somewhat special. 50 is the wrong number. It is. And uh, it's probably number 50, 60. Four or something in total, yeah, counting all, all the ones, ones they've done from, from home. home. So, yep. big number. So, as usual, we have a car at the front here. Yep. We don't know if you've done this before, but if we have, we probably don't remember. <laughs> Hopefully. So, we can. Oh, I don't think we have. I don't think we have done no. this one. That's quite nice, actually. Very yes. classic. Yep. So, feel free to guess this one. Yep. And uh, so, we need to guess the make, the model, yep. the year as well, and yep. the color. The color, mm. which once again, we probably don't know. Uh, but we'll learn. We will learn eventually. Yeah. We always learn on all these live episodes. Absolutely. Yeah. And as usual, we're not prepared. Not prepared? Not... Prepared for what? Prepared for the live. Oh. Because we're there early. So normally we're not ready on a Friday, so we can't oh. be ready on a Thursday. Yeah, it is a bit interesting. So okay, yes. how about how about we start off with, let, let us know if anyone's got yeah. any questions. So right? we can see because quite a few people online already yep. uh, across the different channels. Ask so, us any, any questions. Any, any questions, absolutely. Yeah. So, if you wanted to see something, we can just run out and grab it. Absolutely. Um, yeah. But we do have a few things. We prepared. have a few things. We actually receive a lot. Um, we just received a big, big Yakumo shipment. It's probably the biggest that we received in a long time. Yep. Uh, Lots of stuff in there. Lots, Lots of, of, of products. So it's going to be a day of uh, picking up products. Yes. We receive uh, some flying scots, man, actually. Some trains. Oh, we did. We hadn't seen any of them in a while. We haven't had them for a long time. Yep. And what else do we have? Had a whole heap of the Bandai turn up. Bandai. Yes. yes. Star Wars, actually. Lots yeah, of Star Wars. Yeah, Star Wars, yes. Yeah. So, hello, Nick. We can see Nick being online. So, good afternoon, Nick. So, Which Nick? Our Nick. Our Nick. Our oh, Nick. Hello, Nick. Me. No, not me. Oh, you, you're over there, too. <laughs> I'm there, oh, too. You're a magician. So, you got Nick, and there's a few other ones that I see popping online. Bruce. Hi, Bruce. Hello. All right. So, yes, that does know what you would like to see today. Yep. You know, we're going to lock down here in Melbourne, so some of you may be doing some modeling from home. Mm. So if you want the last minute things, we can bring them here, can have a look, and then we can put them in a box and send them out tomorrow yeah, morning. Absolutely. So be operating online from tomorrow for a week only, hopefully. Hopefully, yeah. So it's been mandated a week at some the moment. Yeah, yep. Absolutely. So, And all right, so. All right, what are we going to look at first? Okay, so. Do we do some RC stuff first for a change? Yeah, why not? Or do we do some models? What do you got? Well, we received Yoakum, as I said a moment ago, um, uh, and I thought we haven't spoken about drift stuff for a long time. Well, Yoakum is very specialist in the drift. They started uh, developing the drift cars many, many years ago uh, with, uh, what's the Japanese drift again? Is it D? I can't remember. I did know it. I can't remember now, but it was a long time ago. And so they worked in conjunction with a lot of the, uh, the full-size teams. Yes. And so they licensed the bodies. Yes. And then uh, because the drift is so big in Japan, Japan. They, they started developing their cars to work as uh, specific drift cars. That's right. And they soon discovered that it's not just converting a touring car, it's actually redesigning a car to drift properly. In fact, it's actually almost more similar to a buggy in some, in some ways. Yes. Uh, we're going to have a look at this in a moment. Hmm. But uh, this is one that we received just today. Hmm. Uh, and nowadays, there are rear-wheel drive. Yes. So they've gone through four-wheel drives yes. where they were closer to... Uh, a four drive touring car, yeah, and now they move to having the engine at the back. Yes, uh, let me see if I pop on this camera, you can probably see it better. 
So I think the philosophy is quite different, isn't it? Because with a touring car, you want to try to keep all the weight low and in the center. That's right. And with a drift car, because you want to flick the directions, you're actually trying to get pendulum effects to work. So, yeah. So hence why you've got the, the weights on quite far ends of either way. Yeah. And, and different models have different gearboxes to have the motor standing up higher or lower or yes. more forward or mm. more backwards because obviously the distance between the motor and the rear drive axle yes. makes a huge difference in the way the car is going to handle um, when it's drifting. Yes. And yes. so um, we receive a, a drift kit today that yep. we, we haven't had for some time. We had yeah, the high end ones, yeah. but we haven't had the. Oh, yes. Good idea. A little bit of idea of yeah. Here we there. go. So as I said, the, the the motor stays at the back here, so yep. all the weight is there. Yes. So we haven't had some of these entry level kits. We had the expensive one, colorful one. Yes. The, the really bling, lots of aluminium. Bling, bling. Yep. But we haven't had the uh, S version, which is the uh, one of the cheaper ones or more uh, uh, entry level ones. Mm. And we also received quite a few of the upgrades. So they've released some new servos, also yep. for drifting. They yes. have designed servo with specific characteristic they are more yep. responsive yep. Uh, to gyroscope because when you yes. drift you tend to use gyroscopes all the yes. time and the servo goes under a huge stress because it keep getting feedback from from the gyroscope yep. you can't steer and do all yeah. kind of different things you're always correcting absolutely yeah and so um hence why they have developed this specific range of servos that are for drift cars yep and uh on top of it if you want to look really good you've got some really nice colorful fans red to match your red gyroscope and chassis and then black to match your the black well everyone knows that colorful accessories absolutely make the car go faster absolutely absolutely right it's faster but they it do is. they do other colors too so i yes. wonder what's the difference oh it'll be, it'll be slightly oh, I don't know. faster or slower yeah yeah probably a different oh, i don't know i'm just making it up now but uh it sounds good yes yes definitely so so that's for drifting for Yakima. Yeah. Uh, they also released uh, a brand new body shell, uh, which is oh, a Nissan yes. S15 Silvia. Now it's probably hard. So that's going to front camera again. It's yep. probably hard to see from there. But yeah. uh, again, they're all licensed bodies, hmm. and Yakima is really well known to produce some really well-made and well-designed bodies. Yeah, and they do have some accessory packs as well. So you've got the wings, spoilers, and accessories yep. really that you can. In your car here, that's the so way. good thing about accessory packs is, I mean, even though it's designed for this particular body, you can fit them onto quite a few different Absolutely. ones as well. That's right. Mm. That's right. Get that's that right. scale look. Yes. And let's put that one away for a moment. Yep. We have a fully finished drifter here. Ah. Let's move it over. Now you're talking about drifting. That's that's a finished drifter from yeah. Team Magic. Yes. And they've done a really good job too. They have. Yeah. Indeed. Because so, a lot of the drift cars, well, the cheaper ones, tended to have been just a touring car with some really slippery tyres. Yes. And they look the part, but they don't actually drive that well. If you have a closer look at this, this is actually a custom-designed drift-type chassis. So to, to point out the differences, you've got the, the motor at the front here, and it's driving quite a number of pulleys. And these pulleys are actually at a different uh, drive ratio, yeah, front to rear. That's right. So... It's basically it's overdrive the rear on this one. Overdrive the rear should be up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so basically, you're, you're making it so that the rear is trying to overtake the front, which helps right. that we've changed the direction quickly. Yes. The Absolutely. other thing too is um, you've got the battery mounted at the very far end, so you've got all the weight sort of this end, this end. So you've got this semi pendulum effect happening, yeah. um, and then you've got the uh, the drift tires. So Plastic. quite slippery. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. And one of these big differences is. Throw or yeah, the steering so how much steering uh, movement you get. So that's quite a lot, but actually the Yokoman ones have got even more than this. Even more, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And you can buy some kits often enough to uh, improve the steering angle as you can get you know, almost 90 degrees. It's, yep. it's really impressive. So, yep. um, yeah, and that's a drift car, really. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so it's interesting to look on this this way, too. Yes, true that. You can see all the pulley system here. Yeah. So see how it's not as low as a competition touring car. That's right. Yeah. So it doesn't really affect it because we're trying to get it to perform in different ways. And also when you look at the chassis, there's a lot of um, cutouts for actual flex. Flex, that's right. Yeah. Very different concept. As you can see, Tom has been drifting this car with a really fast motor. So he had this, this wheels where the rear and they're completely worn out. Mm. Then he shift them at the front and put the front at the back. So yep. there'll be more life here. Yep. 
but they definitely wear out as well. Yeah. Also, Excellent. the setup on the shocks too, because basically you want it to react really quickly. That's right. So there's not a lot of um, uh, oil dampening. Yep. Just so you can change directions quicker. Absolutely. Yeah. And as for drifting, something different. Mm. So pretty good. We've got quite a few people. We have uh, Bruce here saying uh, the likes of our show. Bruce, you can watch oh, it good. tomorrow again uh, or whenever suits you. So we'll we have to do it a bit early, as, as we said before. But yep. you know, we'll be uh, on YouTube for you to watch again. Yep. We have Cameron from Queensland. Cameron, good to see you. Thank you for watching us. Hello. OK, so we can park this one. OK, so that's uh, with uh, drift cars. So we've got a little yoke. The yoke yoke kit. Let's see if anyone is going to start guessing this car in the front here. This is a really a classic. It is a classic. Now, it, it is a generation of this particular car is, is quite famous. Yes. Um, so that might give you a little bit of a hint. That's right. You know, it's, uh, yeah, very special. Mm. I, I don't think there is many model actually made as a scale model of this one. Oh, of this particular version, I don't, I think, don't so. think so. When you look at the front end, the front end is very unique to this particular car. Yes, yeah. definitely. So let's leave it a few minutes and see if someone can guess it. Otherwise, we may show the front end. What do you think? Mm. They will give it away, perhaps. Yeah, it might. It might. might. OK, so. All right, what do we what do we have a look at? So do we go Star Wars? Well, Star Wars, I've only brought the one thing in Star Wars. We've actually got a whole heap of stuff. Uh, but most of it's out there. So if anyone wants to see a particular yes. thing. I will show you this. This is the um, this is the new version of the uh, the X Wing. So this is the Red Five version, which um, uh, has a, a different uh, pilot figure. So this one has Ray in it, and it also has a different uh, stand. So this is from the uh, is it Rise of Skywalker? Yes, the Rise of Skywalker. They actually have these flying over um, water. So there right. is a water base that's included, as well as a standard white base as well. So. That's a very nice kit. Just arrived. All right, there's some other obscure stuff. And uh, I don't know, maybe the viewers could help me out with this. Does anyone know what, what this series is? Oh. So this is a bit obscure to me. So reading in the Japanese, this is, um, what was it? What's over here somewhere? It's uh, Elgheim. So Elgheim is the series which I don't know anything about, but there's quite a few individual um, figures. And then there's also um, this big full set as well. So I had a quick look inside. I mean, yeah, so we've got to have a look inside of this one. All right. Let me see if I can change the camera. We'll get it from the, uh, the top there. OK, coming. Here we go. Okay. All right. So let's have a close look here. All right. So there's lots of um, sprues here, but you might notice that these particular sprues are not, um, they don't have the multi colors on them. So these would be quite early kits. Yeah. And it's probably a very early anime series before Gundam, I'm guessing, or probably early Gundam type. You can see the simplistic hands as well. So can my guess this is a, uh, a reissue? And uh, to get all four of these characters inside this one massive box is pretty amazing. I mean, you have them all fighting it out. That's if that's what they do. You can see here. It's pretty interesting. I mean, they do look very old school. They do look a very early old 80s look. The lines are very different, hey? Mm. I like so that. And, and that's from the same series as well. So, a tall. Nice. All right. So, if anyone uh, can enlighten me, let me know what this uh, series is about. I'll be interested. have to do some research. Yeah. So, whoop, here we go. Going. Back. All right. So, I've got some of that. And then, oh, all the Pokemon lovers. Oh, I, know your, I know your kids love these. Okay. So, we've got uh, School Bunny. So, School Bunny right here. And I've got uh, Piplop right here. So, this is part of the. Um, Actually, are these the, uh, the entry grade? I can't tell now. This is a quick series, okay, which is yep. similar to entry grade. So That's right. they have a limited uh, number of parts, uh, easy to put together. So perfect for kids or first time builders. And uh, these are the later uh, Bandai ones. So you don't need to paint them. They actually yep. got all the color separation in them as well. So if you're interested in Pokemon, you've actually got the gigantic. Oh, look at this. 
Magikarp. So big fish. It's a big fish. That's really weird. I mean, it's a it's a really big kit. I don't know. Is is a Magikarp a big fish? Easily over a meter long. Oh, is it? Wow. Oh, okay. Carp. Okay, so that makes sense. Look at this. So huge. Look at that. It's a big box of fish. So here you got the you got the yellow there for the uh, I guess that's like the cat catfish yeah. whiskers. Got big sections here for the tail. Over here you got more big sections yeah. here. That's all work out where that is. And then here it's a bit easier to recognize as a big head with the eyes here, now here. But I think the funniest bits are these here. This is where all the color separation is. This wow. bit up here is actually the lips. That's beautiful. That's impressive, actually. It's about the same size as my lips. If you can see how many different colors, actually, because that's pink. That's a lighter pink. Yes. So it's a tongue, white. Man. Is it? Yeah. Yeah, it is, actually. You go white here and then red. Yeah. So all the white, that, that's your eyes. So you put a sticker in there for the eyeballs. You got your fins. And then you got a clear base there. Oh, oh. sorry. Yeah. yeah. To support it. So that's a giant medical. That's a fun kit. Yeah, it's a different one. I think my, my girls will love it. <laughs> Pretty, pretty decent size, absolutely. Big molds. Yeah. Nice. All right, so we got some Pokemon. Pokemon. Yes, series done. I think uh, yeah, that's got to be one of my favorites. I think this is actually really impressive from a manufacturing perspective as well, actually. Yes. So, what series so, is this? So, this is part of the new Figure Rise Labo series. So, Labo in Japanese, they tend to shorten a little words. So, Labo stands for laboratory. Yeah. So, it's almost like they're experimental division i guess so they've played around with a lot of um technology in making multi-layered molds yeah. yeah and that's how they've gotten the um uh this very smooth graduation with the uh, very thin suit yeah. particularly the orange so you can actually it looks sheer yeah so i just want to quickly have a look Absolutely. at that so i'm going to do an open box video on this as well which is going to go into a bit further but i'll right. show you the really impressive parts so let me see that so this is the torso Okay, so you got a chest here, down to her abdomen here. These are the sides. There's her back. I think no, that's the other side, and that's her back there. We can just see her butt. Okay, and if you have a, I don't even see it on camera, but you can see the really smooth graduations, because basically what they've done is they molded the yeah. uh, flesh first, and then the yellow goes on, and then the clear orange is put on top. So that's how you get all that different. Definitely. Yeah, the other thing that's really impressive is this part here. Okay, so yeah. Let's see if I do it over the black section here. So the face, all the eyes actually molded in colored plastic. Okay, because of there we go. Okay, let's try and get rid of those reflections. So yeah. So you see eyebrows and things like that. The eyebrows are actually the, the brown part that was already molded. So quite often these dolls, they'll have uh, all this printed and all this will eventually come off because you rub it all off. This will never rub off because it actually is part of the plastic. And this is the one, two, three. That's three colors as well. And then you've got the eyes. And the eyes are actually a follow me type eye. So they've got a very deep um, uh, pupil. They've got reflections molded in there as well. So that when you move it across, it actually looks like that she's still looking at you. Impressive. Which is a little bit creepy, but I don't know. Definitely is. I don't know. I wouldn't mind. But you wouldn't be unhappy to have this one looking at you. No, not at all. So there you go. So that's that's a suka from um, Evangelion 2. So I'm sure a lot of them. Um, uh, Evangelion fans are out there. See. I mean, as you see it on the box lid here, this has been unpainted. So you can get this finish uh, straight out of the box. Straight, straight, yeah, as it yeah. is. Amazing. So that, that's one of it's, Yeah. It's so, representing really well. So all the uh, the color separation. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, really good. Nice. Yes, very nice. All right. So meanwhile, someone is suggesting or is asking if this is a James Bond car. It's close to it. Very close. Close to it, but not the exact one, but same family. Very close. Yeah. So that gives you a bit of a hint. Bit of a hint. I'm really glad to see we've got quite a few people actually online today. Yeah. Even though it was a last minute snap live. Yes. We still have quite a few quite a few joining us. So everyone, let us know if you want to have a look at something, we can grab it from the shop. Yeah, for sure. We can do a quick unboxing or any mm. questions or whatsoever. Mm. Just let us know in the comments. We can just go and grab a few things for you. So yeah. As usual, the cast, for those that does just join us, we have a car to guess at the front here. We have someone suggesting it could be a James Bond car. And it's yeah, the closest suggestion so far. Yeah. So, so you can work off that. 
Yes. So we still need the uh, the model, the year, yeah. and the color. That's right. Yep. Tony, jumping online. Yes, Tony, a day early. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you for joining. Okay. All right. So, what should we look at now? Where did we go here? Well, I still got yeah, there's still quite a bit of Bandai. So we've got this uh, new series that comes from the uh, uh, a new anime uh, a series called Eighty Six. So from what I can gather, Eighty Six, um, I like a lot of these anime. It's all about uh, bad guys and good guys. Yes, there's always bad guys and good Obviously. guys. Okay. Now, who Lena is, I don't know, but she looks pretty good. So you've got uh, a figure. So yep. this figure is part of the figure right series, so they're all jointed and yep. you can um, pose them. And then over here, we've got the juggernauts. And these look like a I don't know, creepy four-legged spider type thing with a big gun. So one of those is one of her rides. And then the other one is a, a general purpose one. So this is really interesting because it's all brand new. Uh, not really interesting because they release stuff that's popular over in yeah. Japan. I really have no idea about it here. So I might be able to just see a little bit of detail here from the series. That's it. And then we've got this one here. Just yeah, so how about we, we look inside Lena? Yes. All right, so she's got this semi sort of sailor inspired outfit. Right? Yes. But it's semi steampunky looking. So this gives you the idea of a, um, a, a modern Bandai yeah, type yeah. figure kit. Okay, so you get your multi colored sprue, uh, which is quite impressive. This is one of the uh, uh, specialist um, manufacturing features of Bandai. You've got a section of uh, stickers here. Now, this particular one also comes with various faces with various um, expressions. expressions. So, I don't know if a lot of people know, you can see how it's um, articulated with uh, sections for the legs and arms. These are quite often used for a stop motion um, animation. Yeah. So if you want to get into that yourself, this is the easiest right. way. Right. Okay. You know, change, being able to change expressions yes. and then changing hands and overall pose, uh, it's really clever. So this is a section of the hair here. It's quite interesting how they've been able to design the molding because that's one color of uh, purple. But as yeah. you look at it, it looks like there's multiple it tones does. in there. Yeah, 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 definitely. So that's probably because of uh, uh, the uh density of that particular um tone okay so there's also a clear um stand there so obviously you know it helps it yeah, stay nice. in place with all the different uh poses you got a dress here uh her chest various leg parts and you see there's a lot of ball joints you see the bottoms of her shoes, shoes. with the heels yeah heel shoes yeah and then here you got some blue sections and so the blue section is basically her um her suit that's it and you can see it's really well um design is quite a few quite a bit of detail there yeah so there's um the, the edges, edges like edges. um uh i don't know you call it that but like you're training joints. Yeah. yeah so you got the arms there as well and the various colors different shoes colors. So you, you you have white shoes and and blue and blue actually different colors so there's probably different outfit that you can actually um have her on so there's yeah you probably get a better idea from here i guess yeah definitely so i guess if we hold it up like this Okay, so you can see her in her various poses across here. So you can get her into some pretty dynamic. And then here it's showing you the, the three different facial Faces, expressions. Yeah. And you've got options. She's got the hat you can put on her or leave it off. You can see her just holding her hat there. She's also got a notebook. You know, you're always going to carry your notebook around. And then that's the, uh, the vehicle that she drives, which is one of the ones that we've got over here. That's pretty cool. So that's a Series 86. So, pretty funky look. Nice. So, Japanese always come out with some interesting um, stories. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So, apart from that, we've got some Gundam as well. Yes. So, it was a pretty massive haul of stuff. So, we've got this very new Jin. Yeah. So, it's Jin right there. Jin. So, Jin in uh, Master Grade. So, Master Grade is quite big. It's a 1 to 100 scale uh, kits. Again, if you're not familiar with uh, Gundam, these are fully poseable as well. That's right. Uh, Warwick gets into a lot of this sort of stuff. Yeah. Um, and, he, and he does a really good job of it too. And we've got Jin, and then we've also got Z. So with the Z, we've actually got that in a full set with the Penelope. It's a massive box yeah. just out the front. So it's a fighting mode. Um, maybe I should have brought one of those, but it's pretty massive. Huge. Yeah. 
Oh, I guess if anyone wants to see it, I can always grab, can it. grab it. Yeah, yeah. let me know if you want to see it. So those two, they're all available in the shop now. That's right. Yeah. Cool. cool. It's good. What's the new stuff? That's all that. There's the 86. What else do we have here? So I've got some green stuff. Ah, that's right. Green stuff. So among many deliveries this week, also green stuff has arrived with quite right. a lot of new stuff. All right. And so we're going to, yeah. So some of the things we have here, we've got colored acrylic. So it's colored acrylic rod. We also have clear stuff yeah. as well. So I don't know if uh, anyone knows, but uh, there's some Star Wars figurines that are used for gaming. And there's one guy, I think he's in Spain, maybe, uses these particular ones, cuts them to length, and then puts them into the figures and lit with one of the green stuff um, LEDs. So oh, it looks wow. like a lightsaber. Yeah. So because these uh, act like uh, fiber optics, the whole thing just glows. That's beautiful. Yeah, looks nice. So I've got these in variety of uh, diameters. Sizes too. and length, actually. Yep. Some short ones, long ones. Yep. So these are 1.6, and I think they go up to around about 15 mil in the clear. Yeah, it's quite thick ones, yeah. Yep. Okay, so they're the uh, acrylic. Okay, so we've got some uh, decals as well. Might be a bit difficult for you to see. But this particular set is um, graffiti. And they do quite a variety of different ones too. So they've got uh, yep. posters. Uh, they've got heraldry for um, uh, those that do uh, medieval gaming. All sorts. So they're very generic. You can use them for any sort of diorama that you like. You can put these on the side of a, like a truck model. So they look quite interesting. Got quite a bit of reflection, actually. Oh, is let's, let's put them on the top camera because these are quite... Oh, quite there nice you go. Actually. That's better. Here we go. All right, so I'll spin that around. So you can sort of see the uh, the different designs. So each sheet always comes with, um, uh, each set comes with two sheets. Okay, so you've got that one there, and then there's a different one on this side. So they're pretty good value. Definitely. Yeah. There's a lot of white ones there that you probably can't see, but they'll it's show up really full. well on a, on a wall. Oh, so it's quite full, yeah, definitely. Yeah, the chockers. Okay, so apart from that, we've got the miniature magnets that are back in stock. Is super popular with the gamers because you can easily put those on the figures yep. so you can change their uh, weaponry or their arms or their heads around. Uh, so I've got all the different sizes. So they're three mil uh, and five mil. Yep. And you get 50 in a packet. It's quite yes. a lot. And then the thickness is different. As some that are really thin, about yes. a mil or something. Yeah. Or even so half a mil. Yeah. So it's half mil, one mil, two mil, and five mil and two mil. Yeah. So pretty useful. Okay. And then, of course, from Green Stuff World, Green Stuff. Obviously, yeah, got that back. So where they, that's where they <laughs> started from, I think. Is it called Green Stuff? And it is. The, the regional Green Stuff. It is. So Green Stuff is a two-part putty. Yeah. So I might be able to see it there. One side is yellow, one side is blue. So you've got a hardener and uh, an epoxy in there. So you cut them at even length off the tape, mix them together. Yes. Turns green. So Green Stuff. And then you use it for making new bits on your models. So it's very much like Milliput if you've heard of Milliput, but yeah. the feel is different. So quite often, some people mix this with Milliput to get the consistency they want. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay, that's So it's very handy for sculpting, particularly figures, and then also for doing textures on various things as well. So very good stuff there. Of course, with green stuff, there's blue stuff. Blue stuff. So blue stuff's gone really well, too. Very much so. Incredibly popular because this is for um, copying parts, modeling. Yeah. Right? So you use it to cast an item to make a, a replicants of it. So this, you basically just drop it in the hot water. Yes. It goes all mushy. And while it's hot, you press it against the item or you get the item and press it inside. Yeah. And then it leaves in imprint. When it solidifies, uh, when it cools down, it solidifies. And then you can mold in it. Yeah. So you can put resin or super glue or anything, anything to you want. copy. Definitely. Yeah. And nothing sticks to it because it's silicon. Yeah. And then it just pops out. And then you can reuse it, actually. So yes, you can that's put right. It in hot water again and start all over. That's right. It goes all mushy again. We actually have a video. You made a video of this yes. a few weeks back. Yeah. So there should be a video on this on our YouTube channel. So yeah. if you have a chance, jump on our YouTube channel, subscribe. So we have videos, tutorial coming out every day. Yes. So yeah, definitely. Yeah. And then they have one more. is the brown stuff, which has been out brown stuff. for some time now. Yes. So, so brown stuff's got a slightly different consistency. Yeah. Uh, but unfortunately, yeah, they're out of stock and have been for a couple of months now. So yes, just to be it's, it's a so heavier easy. feel. Yeah. Um, so hopefully we'll get it back soon. Absolutely. Yep. All right, the other thing that may be of interest is these um, brushes. Spongy. These are actually silicon brushes. Yes. Have you seen these? They're soft. Yeah. So the whole silicone. idea. Yeah. Okay. yeah so okay. the idea is that these are used for sculpting. Yes. So when you're pressing it into putty like um, right. uh, green stuff, it doesn't give a sharp edge. So if you're doing yes. like skin and creases, 
you press that and it bends wow. and it gives a, a smooth sort of contour. So you've got, you got five different um, uh, shapes, shapes in there. And then you can also get these in different hardnesses too, depending on uh, the sort of work you want. And I think mm -hmm. these are fairly soft. So good for doing sort of skin and faces and things. So you get a little pointy one. These are almost similar to the Hans Workshop uh, little tools that we did recently. Yes, we that's right. For a similar application, yes, actually. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So the sculpting stuff is really yeah, popular definitely. at the moment. A lot of the gamers like to make their own stuff. And then also the scale modelers also want to right. sculpt as well. So they're handy. All right, some other funky stuff. All right, so we've got the rollers. Now, there's so those, many of those. Yeah, so I only brought three because I thought these would be easier for you to see what they do. I might get the overhead camera to look at these. Here we go. Oh, it's very hard to see. It's a bit hard to see the detail. Let's see if I can get some shadows. Okay, so this particular one oh. is the cobblestone. Actually, if you put it down on the black black, you may oh, okay. be able to get a better idea. Okay, so the whole idea with these is you roll out your putty, like the green stuff, yeah. make it thin, and then, and then you roll this over the top, yeah. and it leaves the imprint of the cobblestones on it. That's right. So it makes an instant um, base. And uh, you can also get the, the, some rings that you can get to put around here yes. of different thicknesses. Yes. So based on the thickness of your, um, I guess, base, uh, really, yes. you, 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 you can adapt your... Uh, um, rolling pin yes and you can actually press it uniform like with uniform pressure yeah because you don't have this kind of going kind of at, you know sideways or, yes. or, or yeah to make sure you know, it's perfectly flat. flat absolutely so yeah all right so that's okay. that one that goes in here let's yep. mix them up yep and i'll show you this one this was really interesting because a lot of people have been asking for this sort of corrugated stuff oh oh let's check plate yep let's check a plate on it it's got different things though here yeah, so There's the whole idea is, and things. yeah, so you could use use this, and you cut just that section for checker plate, and you just use plates by plates because you never yeah. really have the whole massive thing, right? Or if you just want pressed steel, you've got these sort of hinged steel bits here, so you can cut those sections out and just apply them onto a model. That's right. So you got a lot of scope for um, doing stuff there, and I think a lot of the truck guys would probably like that too because they're always looking for checker plate and checker plate is very right. hard to find. Beautiful. Yep. All right, so let's check yeah. plate. And then something totally different is this one, which they call Elven. So what it's, it's going to do is it's got these, these Elf-style uh, art motifs on it. Yeah. Which, again, is going to be hard to see, but you might be able to see it if we can get some shadow in there. There we go. So yeah. you see it there? Yeah. So, again, you're just going to roll it, and you can use it for um, uh, walls, for a, yeah. a particular fantasy-type uh, layout. Or even for floors. Floors, yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. And so there's quite a few different ones. There's dwarven style, uh, there's Chinese style, Egyptian style. So a lot. Like so it. it's only like a few different types. They've got probably 30, 30 different uh, rollers. rollers. Yeah, yeah. It's quite a few different ones. Yeah. So quite good. The other thing that's really good is um, we've got these chromes. So uh, yes. everyone's after chrome. So the chrome. I guess everyone's looking for the mirror finish chrome. Yes. So this is another alternative. So they've got two types. You've got one which you can brush on, which is thicker. Yep. So that's a brush on one. And then there's one here for airbrushing. Yep. Okay, and that's already been pre-thinned. And it's got a, um, a shaker yes. uh, ball in them. And these come out uh, with a mirror finish. It's really great with the brush on one because quite often you don't want to use a lot of it. So that's right. you've got your options there. Makes life a lot easier. And it's really good now because in the past you couldn't really get a, a yeah. good mirror finish. So quite a few manufacturers now producing this ultimate yes. mirror finish. Well, that's right. So you know we've got Molotov as well. That's I've got right. a feeling this is going to be similar to a Molotov type of uh, feel, but it's in a, a, a much easier to use uh, container. Yeah. Here. Something different again. I've got conductive paint. So again, when I'm talking about the guy that's that right. made the uh, lightsabers. Yes. So rather than drilling and putting wires through his figurine. He just painted this conductive paint in two lines yes on the outside of the figure yes. and then on the base he connected up the wires wow, that's brilliant so you know quite often your figures aren't this big so if you try to drill through it it's, it'll probably yeah, just break apart right could break definitely so that's where you can use uh your conductive paint even for bigger stuff imagine you just you just paint it along the that's side right. of a spaceship and it'll just you know your electricity will just flow through it it'll just follow the contour of the mold that's you don't right. have to worry about wires hanging around everywhere that's Brilliant. That's so, a very good idea. Conductive paint. Excellent stuff. Other thing is stencil glue. 
So I think, was it last week we talked about stencils? Yeah, a few weeks ago, we're showing yeah. how to use a stencil for either body shells or yep. models. And yep. we had the Vallejo and the Beauty Design stencils. Yes, that's right. That's right. So Green Stuff, um, they've got uh, the bare stencil material, which is yeah. like that acetate. So you can cut your own stencils. Yep. And they also make this stencil glue. So the idea is you paint this onto the stencil. Yep. And when it dries, it stays tacky. That's right. So when you press it on, you don't have to worry about it shifting. Yep. And you might notice from my demonstration yep. when yep. you had stuff moving around. Yep. So this would have stopped it from moving around. So that's a stencil glue. Now almost finished. I've got the uh, over here. Oh, that's a chrome. Two big bottles. All right. So two big bottles. So I guess the acrylic thinner speaks for itself. Yes. So any acrylic paint, that'll thin that. So great for airbrushing. Because when you're airbrushing, you want something quite pure and something that will have some alcohol in it so it'll evaporate right. reasonably quickly. The other stuff that a lot of people may not know is the master medium. So the advantage of master medium is this is like paint with no pigment in it. Right. So if you want to extend the color and dilute it, because quite often if you just add water, yeah. it's going to lose its um, strength. Yeah, yeah. So if you add some of this to it, it's going to dilute the color, but it'll still have the same paint strength. Same. Yeah, okay. Yeah. You can also use this for making liquid pigments. Okay. So you drop your pigments in it, which is powdered, yep. and then when you paint it on, um, it'll just have this fine scattering all wow. over the place. So I guess it's a bit like using a clear, but it's bare base. Right. So it's probably better to use in, in that sort of situation. Just keep all your clears with the top coats. So okay. there. So that's the sort of new stuff we've got from Green Stuff World, along with the usual restocks. So we yes. have uh, recyclable the little chains. Yes. Um, foliage. Yep. All the LEDs. All the LEDs. Um, yep. I don't know. There's a lot of stuff. Several hundred products, really. They actually, have this, one day. this really nice um, uh, airbrush nozzle cleaner, too. That's which right. Which is like a little reamer. Little pin. Yeah. Yeah. That's a really good idea because often you get the, yeah. the nozzle blocked. And yeah. It's always really hard to find something of the right size. Yeah, that's right. I tend to use like a, a toothpick because yes. obviously yeah. you, know, you, you won't damage the metal. Really. That's right. But this is perfectly designed for that. It is. So it, it looks like a needle, which has been um, shaved on one side. Yep. So it acts like a reamer. So you, you, you have to be careful because it is metal. Yes. But once you push it in and then you just turn a little bit, yeah, that's that, it. that'll clear out that dried yep. paint and you'll be yep. ready to go again. Definitely. Yep. So I think I'll do a review on that at a later Absolutely. stage. So Green Stuff World. Very good. Good. All right. Okay. Do you have anything? I think, I think I'm almost... Well, actually, I have one more thing that I forgot. Oh, before. yeah. So... We've been talking about traction compound. So back to RC cars. Yeah. Actually, I can see that we have that slot car guy actually online. Oh, yep. Travis, are you still there? If you're still there, we've got something we would like to present to you, actually. So if you're still there, so traction compound. And um, this is for um, RC car, racing cars. Yes. And we do this for off-road and on-road. Yes. And so we have um, this new product called TDK. Uh, which is a non-toxic. Often enough, these kind of um, products are really um, smelly and toxic and not good and not, not really good for your health. But this company is producing something which is um, a lot more gentle yep. and so, still effective from a performance perspective. Yeah, so it's eco-friendly, it's uh, biodegradable, and it's non-carcinogenic, which yeah. a lot of the other stuff has been, which we've been That's using right. for years. So I think a lot of clubs are going towards this way That's right. um, because it's low odor too. Um, and it still gives you a very, very good grip on the Absolutely. tires. And so we now have a spray-on um, bottle that we source to put some of this uh, compound in. So that, yeah. that makes it really convenient where you need to spray that on, on the tires because it's just like a quick spray like this. Yeah. And you don't need to touch it, use brushes or whatsoever. Yeah. And you don't contaminate back your uh, your bottle because yes. often enough you use the kind yeah, of that brush right. there and then you... Yeah. You pick up some dirt from the tires, you put it back in, yep. and then it's all contaminated. Yep. So this one is much easier to use. Yeah. But Yokomo also released uh, this little uh, tire source case, which is specifically designed for uh, sourcing your tires, so, so, it's, so we say. Yeah. And effectively, what you do, you put some of these in the, into the bottle here, yep. and then you have a, I think it's a spray on, is it? Oh, no, it's a, no, so it's, a got, it's got a little roll on the felt. Kind of, yeah, felt, felt yeah. sort of. Yeah. yeah. That's fine. So. so again, you can just keep that <clears throat> as your um, as your refill. That's right. Uh, just pour it into there, Absolutely. and then every time you use it, uh, the contaminant will only stay on the outside. Stay on the outside. Yeah. So this is for traction compound, and um, we were thinking that this could work well on slot cars as well. I think it would do. And so, so 
Yeah. I mean, there's drag slots as well, right? Yes. So obviously, this would be handy with drag slots because you want that take up uh, without any wheel spin. Yes. Yeah. Because it does make all rubbers really tacky. That's right. So, so yeah. So we can find out from the the slot. Slot guys. guys. Yeah. Yep. Otherwise, we're gonna try for ourselves. That's right. I'm yep. ready for that. Yeah. So let's see. So anyway, Travis from that slot car guy he does have a big channel on uh, Instagram and also YouTube. He started doing some yes. really cool videos. He's got a massive truck at his place, huge yep. Carrera. Mm. And so if he's around, well, Travis, you should try to put some of these on your tires, and then we can see how far, how quicker you go. Yeah, I'd like to see that. Meanwhile, Tony is suggesting or is asking yep. if the car feature number two in the product, I guess in the in the in the model name. It does. It does indeed. It does. I think I think I think Tony does. has it. You think he's got it? Well well let's see what what else is in the name, Tony. Tell us. Yeah, there's a, there's a few more bits, L bits in there. Letters and numbers yes. and everything. Yeah. But I think so we're still it. we're still missing the year and the colour. And the colour and the make. Yes. Missing everything. We just have yeah, a number. Yeah, yeah. We just well, have a the number. colour we don't know either. So we don't know the colour, but yeah. We'll find out. So uh, I think we're almost at the end today, actually. You've been a bit of a quick put together live show. Yeah. A few kits. Yeah. Let's well, see if you have any came, questions. All came as a, a bit of a surprise, wasn't it? All, Absolutely. The, all the goings on. Absolutely. So. But thankfully, we received lots of stock, so there'll be plenty of um, product we can send out this week. So yes. we'll be still operating online. Yep. Obviously. Hmm. Um, and uh, we'll be available on Facebook. So if you have questions or whatsoever, we can send you some quick photos of products we have. Yeah, for sure. Easy. So, Tony is suggesting that he's an Aston Martin DB2. Oh, what do you reckon? I think he's correct. Yeah, he's got it, hasn't he? Yeah, I yeah. think so. This yeah. is it. What, what, what year is it? What year it could be? Right, let's put it this way. So, I don't, know, I don't know when this was made first, actually. Well, let me see. Let me quickly Google Aston Martin DB2. Two. Let's see what we found out. Oh, that's been going for some time. I oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, only a few years. Only three years. Only so this was just in the middle. Oh, is it? <laughs> okay. Hasn't been going forever. In the fifties. Yeah, I think I think he's got it. So it was yeah. made in nineteen fifties, and it went till nineteen fifty three. Yep. And this is the specific model for nineteen fifty two, actually. So well done, Tony. A bit of chrome on it, yes, definitely. So, this is a very iconic car, actually. I'm just pretty now that it was a 2.6 liter engine, two seat coupe, two doors, two sitter. That's the car. The back's really nice, too. Back is pretty cool. All right, let's have some close up looks. There we go. So, that's your front end here. That's oh, this way. Yep, very classic. It's a bit of photo wish used for the uh, the front grill, so it's really fine. Very well detailed up here, yeah. Yeah. So Definitely. you get your nice little uh, chrome trims across the top of the bonnet, then the chrome on the bumper, of course. Goes all the way up to kind of air intake here. Yeah. And then you got your uh, uh, window wipers as well. Photo edge. Yep. Moving to the side here. Shape of the body, super smooth. Super nice, yeah. Definitely. Got spoke wheels, really detailed. Got door handles. Super fine spokes, aren't they? Very fine. Definitely. I've got a question for you guys yes. regarding the car. If it came up in your Google search, do we know what kind of engine the original DB2 had? If it was a V8, a really large V8, or anything like that? Well, was that uh, a 2.6? Was it? It's saying here. That's the first result I read. Is a 2.6 liter uh, Lagonda. I'm not really sure. Not familiar, but yeah, it's a 2.6 liter. So not not a huge huge engine. Yeah. Yeah, it's it got is. a big bonnet though, isn't it? It's huge, huge bonnet. Like that's a long wheelbase. Look, I mean, look at the front wheels are basically at the corners. Yeah, true that actually, true that. Very good, cool. All right, and this is the, our Aston Martin in one eighteen scale from Techno Model. It's got the sort of um, I don't know what would you call it? A very light metallic blue, isn't it? Light metallic blue, yeah. Mm. Very nice, indeed. Okay, very good. So, so do we have see. anything else? No, I don't think we've got much else. So no? we're here for questions. So if anyone has any more questions, otherwise we'll be... Oh, we've got one more. We forgot this one. Does that excite you? What car is this? 
It's a Prius. Oh dear, it's a Prius. That's so a this, this is one of the newer kits from um, Aoshima. So it's one of the smaller kits. Uh, Thirty second scale, I think. Let's see. Was well, a press together type kit, so okay. that's an easy one. Yeah, it's for for beginners. That gives you an idea. That's smaller it is to this one. So we've got 18 scale. What scale yep. do you say is this one? 32. 30 seconds, yeah. Yeah. So half. About half, yeah. Yeah. But yeah. A lot of simple bits. No chrome. The wheel covers. Yes. Yep. You've got your chassis all in one piece. It's a bit hard to see there. It's all in black. And the interior is all in one bit. Well, the sides are folding. That's... Ah. Ah, yes. Oh, that's easy. So, whoop. Yep. So you can quickly pretty much put your... Um, Body on top of it, yeah. And it's got a whole decals. Because, yeah, yeah. Nice to the kit. So a good starting point. This one, definitely. All right. So your little Prius. So that's the latest Prius. On there. And you have one more kit there. So we've got Ultraman. Ah, Ultraman. Well, that's so Ultraman apparently is has been rebooted. Is it? Is it on Netflix? Yeah, it's a CGI reboot series. Right. Okay. So this is from the latest. Um, uh, Netflix uh, reboot. So the early ones definitely look like dude in a soft metal suit right? yeah, when true. they first did them in Japan. And a lot of the stuff is like that. It's a bit like Godzilla. You know? That's right. Floppy tail flopping about. But these new ones have a, a very much a, an Iron Man look to them. Yes. Yeah. Very, very um, uh, jagged, uh, edgy designs on their suits. I don't really know. I haven't watched any of it. Um, I, I guess it's they're just out there to save the That's day. That's right. Absolutely. So, hence Ultraman. Ultraman. Yeah. That's again another Bandai kit. It is. So, again, it's fully posable. Yeah. Um, Doesn't need painting unless you want to. No, that's it? right. Yeah. It's yeah. still pre colored. Yeah. This guy's quite dark, though. He's predominantly a, a dark gray. Yes. Um, and some, some of them have been lighted before, too. So, there's quite a few in the Ultraman yeah. series. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, that's the latest one. Good. Good. All right. So, I think that's. Is that all I've got? I think that's all we have today. That's all I've got. So once yeah. again, we are there early for those who's just joining us. I can see a few people jumping online just now. So yeah. we are there early because tomorrow will be unfortunately locked down, so mm. we won't be able to be in here. Yeah. Uh, but we are hopeful to be back next Friday. Hopefully, yes. Uh, so if not, I guess we'll be moving back at home as we did last year. Yeah, that'll be interesting. That'll um, be interesting. Some good memories. Yeah, yeah. That's and, right. Uh, and so uh, no matter what, we'll be live again next week. Um, we'll let you know how. Follow us through the week on the social media. Yes. So feel free to message us on Facebook if you want to see anything that we have in store. If you cannot come in, we can take yep. some pictures. Yep. Um, and will our videos going up still every day? Yes, still every day. So yep. jump on YouTube, subscribe. Make sure you tick the little bell so you get notifications. Yes. And um, comment. Yep. Let us know what you so think. So today's video is really good. It's a, a review on the new short God Hand brushes. That's right. I'll show you how good they are. So I'll go through each one of them and I'll show you what each one can do. That was very interesting for me, as many of you know. I don't model very much, but that was an interesting um, little product. Yeah, it's quite useful when you use your goggles, That's you know, right. your, your magnifier glass, and uh, at least you don't tap your glass, your, yeah, your right. brush, and your yeah. goggles all the time. Yeah, so they put a lot of thought into it. I mean, simple things. That's quite often you yeah. do that. Yeah. So simple things. I'll um, look at them and then reimagine them. Absolutely. Yeah. Excellent. Very all good. Right. Well, th there's no more questions. You're going to finish up here. Yep. And uh, I won. Have a good week. Stay safe. That's right. Enjoy. Enjoy the, the weekend, actually. It's going to be a quiet weekend at home, I guess, for everyone. In oh, for us around here. Yes. For us around here. So all, all of our friends that join us um, overseas, so yes. they, they probably don't know that we're going this snap live right. now. So you, they'll be able to see it uh, uh, from tomorrow. Actually, yes. from now, right? It's going to be a right. Yeah. That's right. So yeah. So that's a reasoning why we've done it on the Thursday. So. Hopefully see you Friday because it's a seven-day lockdown. Absolutely. So everyone, have a good week and a good weekend. Yep. And uh, keep in touch through social media. And That's right. And we shall see you next week. All right. See you Thank later. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.